we were talking about when we took off on Monday, we were talking about you getting into therapy. Right. And I started seeing your mood getting a little darker. You were getting darker. You were having trouble sleeping. And that's when I was taking a look at that podcast and feeling the weight of it. When you I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel no, bad. That, no. Okay. I don't want you to apologize. Because by you going to therapy, it opened up my mind. Okay. It opened up my mind to to think about what the fuck this poor kid's in therapy what am i doing to him where is his mind going at night with these edibles all of a sudden there was an air of guilt to me i had this guilt to me and the other guilt was this kid's been doing this for six years i think you were about to turn 30 probably yeah at the time yep and I was like, you know what, man? I'm 50-something. I've done time. I've done this. You know, I got my dick sucked behind the church. You know, you do all these things, and you, you, you're you proud of some of the stuff, but you're not proud of some of the other stuff. You weren't doing any of those things. I was encouraging you to going out. You know, you were getting paid. You had access to weed. You had access to fucking edibles. You had access to... I mean, you could have been your whole new Cosby. You could have just <laughs> dumped fucking ABX in, in every chick's drink at a fucking bar and see who passes out first. But, uh, you know, you didn't. You weren't doing those things. In fact, you got even more isolated. And on the flip side of that, I was doing the same thing in my house. All those edibles and all that shit and all the the stupidity from the podcast, from the people canceling to people not showing to, I, I was thinking of this one fucking girl. Don't mention her name. Okay. That got to the podcast late. And then she had the balls to look me in the face and go, Oh, by the way, I don't do any longer than 30 minutes on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, Two weeks later, I see her doing three hours on Rogan. And you're like, you know, you, you, you can't win. You, no. you try everything you can. I knew the girl for years. I was always very sweet to her. We had a great relationship, you know, doing comedy. And all of a sudden, you come in here with that attitude. You know, it was, it was all those things that made me think. I mean, you were... And then you got into comedy. And... I didn't know where that had come from. You know, you wanted to do comedy and you were really working it. You were heading out to the fourth wall. You were really doing it. On the other hand, I was feeling guilty because I couldn't take you with you, me with you, because I had you with me all week. Now I'm going to take you with me on the road and we're going to really fucking hate each other. You know what I'm saying? And I, <laughs> right. got, and I got Dean Delray. I got all these other people who are at a different level who also needed money. So I wanted to spread the, the wealth, you know. I wanted to spread it around all my friends. You know, when you started doing comedy, I got really nervous. Because really? Now you, yeah, you were going to different spots at night. And I always felt I was a little responsible for you. Like, things you didn't know when I was coming back from the store, I would drive by your house just to make sure the fucking, your house wasn't on fire. And I remember were, one of the angriest you ever got at me was... One of our first sponsors, it was Hulu, had, was having a party at Comic-Con in San Diego. So I took my ex down there and Red Band was having a show and it got back because I had a couple drinks before the show and it got back to you that I had driven home drunk from San Diego, which I didn't. Um, I had like a couple drinks before, but then in the two hours of the show, I had sobered up um, and you called me like angry, but like because out of out of love like you you would always do that you there was a lot of times towards the end especially during i guess not right before covid and a little bit after is you would just show up at my apartment and we would take an edible do a uh like sit in the car for 10 minutes like you brought me cuban fried rice a couple times like you 
you did care about me. and then like i i um you would always get like nervous if i was going on the road like driving a long ways like you i think if people thought about you they might think like you don't really get nervous or like not that you don't care about people but like you get like you get actually like really like I was, I would call you like when I got home from places. Like I'm, I'm home. Don't worry about it. Like you, would, and you might say it in a funny way. Like don't go down there. What are you going down there for? But like it's, it's coming from a place of like, I, I don't want you to get hurt. Like I, I remember, I drove Uber for like a month, and you really didn't like that. You're like, what am I gonna tell your mom if someone stabs you in the heart? Yeah. When they- <laughs> He's driving. Why is he driving Uber? You're paying him. You know, Mike leaves here, and I tell Mike the first thing when you get home, hit me back. Right. Whenever I go out at night, I drive by Jimmy's house. I drive by Christina's house. All my friends, just to make sure there's no creepy people in front of there. You know, you were on my watch. I was on your watch. Yeah. And I wanted that love to come through the screen. I think that's what people appreciate the most about the podcast. That's what people hated when I first came back with Zoom. They didn't see the love across the stream. That's why I got to tell people, I can't put people on Zoom if I don't know you. I'd love to get you on. You're very interesting, but they got to feel that connection. You know, Mm -hmm. I cared about you. I wanted the best for you. And at the end, like when the pandemic hit, do you remember us having a fucking specific, I want you to tell me the truth, a specific talk, maybe the beginning of April, where we both looked at each other and we said, a lot of things are going to change from this pandemic. People are going to change their minds. Oh, there was a, like two or three, at least, if not four podcasts about that like very topic. Yeah. Did you ever thought that it was going to be us when we were having those conversations? I didn't pre-think it at all, but like I said last week, you you made it very clear from like almost the beginning, as soon as you had Mercy, that you didn't want to raise her in L.A. So it, when you called and told me that you were leaving, I wasn't I wasn't shocked by it. When I remember around March when like you started to hear about it in Europe and Asia and it wasn't really here yet. And I, I would take walks with Steve Simone and Jimmy, Jimmy Schubert. And we would talk and, and even like, even the president said, Oh, will be gone by Easter. And then we thought maybe by July it'd be over. And then it just, it got to the point where like already before then I wasn't doing much. And then there was literally, literally, 